Hey, I'm back. Okay, so first time home buyer. So if you're watching this video, this is going to be your first time purchasing a home. So I'm going to go over the process with you. Um, if you watch my other video, I talk about the market. And so being prepared. Um, it is crazy. And there's multiple offers. So as long as we are going into this being realistic, it can be done. So just to go over some things to expect, um, kind of touched on some of it a little in the first video, but, um, so what I do for my out of state buyers, and hopefully you're one of the ones that are going to get to come and at least check out the area. Um, but what I do is I go take video of the home. Once you, you know, as I'm sending it to you, if you're like, Hey, really, we really want to see this home. Um, I'll go take video. I prefer to take a video I just, just me in there, I take the video, I come back and I upload it to my YouTube channel. That way you can go back and watch it over and over. Um, if there's something and you happen to be available and there's something that I'm just like, oh my God, they have to see this right now. I will try to video chat you live um, and show you something. But I just like to have a video for you to go back and reference because I promise you if I just did live, by the time I'm down the street, you're gonna go, oh man, I wish I, like, I wish I could see the kitchen again or, um, you know, what did that closet look like? And so I just like you to have a video that you can go back in reference to. So I go do that. Um, and then when you finally say, okay, this is the one we love it. We want to put an offer. I will run comps, which is going to be what the going price, what is sold, what's on the market. Um, you know, what's pending, all that kind of stuff in that, depending on depending on where you're looking at, usually we can do within the subdivision. That's the best places to pull the comps, um, to see what the other going rate, going prices are, um, and to see where that one is priced at. Come up with an offer. Um, right now, like I said, there's not a whole lot of bargaining room unless they're ridiculously overpriced. Um, there's not a whole lot of coming in under ask right now. Um, so if we decide, you know, you're going to go ask, you're going to go over ask, kind of all dependent on where they are originally priced at. Um, so we'll do that. We'll talk about, you know, like I said, hopefully we've already discussed whether or not it's something that you're going to have to ask for closing costs. And if so, then I'll have a couple different scenarios, um, written out for you to choose from of how you want to write the offer. Um, what I'll do is I will then write the offer. It gets sent to you to e-sign. We submit it. Usually we give them 24 hours to respond and if, and hopefully it gets accepted, then you have 24 to 48 hours. Usually if you're out of state, the listing agent will give us 40, sorry, my dog's playing, 48 hours um, for you guys to overnight a check and it get to, get to me. That's going to be your earnest money. Usually it's 1% of the purchase price. Like I said in my other video, if, um, if they're kind of the sellers being a little iffy about the fact that it's a VA loan or whatever it is, you can always offer a little bit more of the earnest money, which sometimes helps. And again, that goes towards your closing costs. So if you're paying all your closing costs and you put down, let's say a $5,000 deposit, that goes, that gets credited towards your closing costs at closing. If by chance we get them to pay closing costs, say they pay all of it, you will get a check back at closing. You will get your money back. Um, usually they prefer a check, sometimes a cashier's check, every listing agent's different. Um, it will, if it is a, a check, it will get cashed and it is either held by the title company or the listing agent. Again, the listing side gets to determine, um, how that is held. So that is, um, the first step. And then the next thing is once we get the accepted contract, your inspection period is going to start. Usually, they were 10 to 15 days lately because of the market. You're seeing about a 7 to 10 day um, inspection period that they are giving us. So that is your time period to do your due diligence, to get an inspector in there. You're going to get just a general home inspection. And then from there, if it comes back and they're like, hey, you know, we think that maybe they, somebody should look at the roof or somebody should look at your AC or whatever it may be, then during that time period, you can have those people go out also. Um, what we do then is we get the report. If there's anything that you see that you want to ask to be done, we can ask them to fix it. They have up until five days before closing to make sure that whatever repairs are asked are done. Um, 
you can ask them, you know, to give more towards closing costs to come down and purchase price. There's different ways to work what you want to ask for them to do either their repairs or in lieu of repairs. So that goes to them. They come back with either, yes, we will do this. No, we will not do this, but we'll do this. That goes back to you. Either you accept what they're offering or you say, nope, we don't want this house done if, you know, they're not going to do that. Again, with the market, just have reasonable expectations. Um, and, and I'm talking about right now, like something with a roof or something, something not cosmetic. Um, and so during that period, if they, you know, if you agree on it, then we move forward. If you're like, nope, we don't want this house. Then at that point you get your earnest money back and we end the contract and move on. Um, if you say, okay, we agree, everything's good, then we move on to the next process. The next process will probably be the appraisal. That's about the same timeline. The lender orders the appraisal. And um, and then with a VA loan from the time that it's ordered for them to go out, they have 10 days. So we wait for the appraisal to come back. We hope that it comes back. If for some reason it doesn't, like in my other video that I talked about, we then try to defend getting them up to where we need them for appraisal. And um, once it appraises, we're good to go and move on to closing. If for some reason it doesn't appraise and we can't get the appraiser to um, adjust what he's coming back with, then at that point you can end the contract and you also get, at that point, get your earnest money back. So, um, and then another thing during appraisal is something to think about when choosing your lender, which is also very important um, when thinking about writing your offer. Because right now, sellers are looking at that. When they're looking at a pile of offers, who the buyer's lender is is coming into play. Because there are some lenders who we know are just have issues with closing or closing on time, or their pool of appraisers they use are very nitpicky. So it's just one of those other items that sellers are looking at right now. Um, so using a lender that we know is good is very important. Um, if you are dead set on using your bank or whatever, that's fine too. If you're open to going with a local lender, there's a couple that I could give you um, to you know, give you to call. I don't get any sort of kickback. I don't get anything from it. It's just lenders who I have personally worked with before who I know know the VA loan and get the deals done. So, um, but that is something to take into consideration is who your lender is because they do all have different lending lender pools. We're not allowed to pick the lender or the, I'm sorry, the appraiser. We're not allowed to pick the appraiser. Nobody has a say in it, but certain lenders do have a certain pool of appraisers they pull from and some are better than others. Um, the appraisers are separate from the inspectors. However, with the VA, some appraisers will come in and will note stuff. Um, usually it's anything, any safety things, any electro, electrical, um, depending on like railings, that kind of stuff. Sometimes they will nitpick those and they will hold the appraisal contingent on the seller fixing X, Y, and Z. And then once those are fixed, then we get the appraisal and everything is cleared. Um, usually by that time, you know, unless the seller is sitting on a ridiculous backup offer, that far into it, the seller is just going to agree to do those, you know, repairs unless it's, you know, something super outrageous. So those are just bumps in the road that we can run into um, and part of the process. It happens few and far between. Usually the appraisal comes in, everything's good to go, and then we get on to closing. So those are just things to prepare for, things that can happen during the purchasing um during purchasing. And I know I hear it from all my buyers. I've heard it from family that they say, oh my God, it's so stressful and it is because you're making a huge purchase and you're worried and you're doing it from out of state and it just gets crazy. But I'm here to make the process as smoothly as possible to answer all your questions, to be honest with you, to, you know, there's no dumb questions. If I see that you're not asking questions that you should be, I'm going to be like, hey, did you know, you know, I just make sure that you are fully aware of every step of the process, how it's to be done, why it's being done. Um, so, and I'll, I'll always know that you can ask me 
any questions, no matter what time of day or night it is, text me, whatever, if I'm awake. If I roll over at 1 o'clock in the morning and I see a text, I'm crazy and I usually will respond. So, um, anyways, so first-time home buyers, it can be done. It's exciting. Working with first-time home buyers, especially my VA first-time home buyers, is literally my favorite thing because I get just as excited as you do. Um, so, anyways, I hope that you enjoy the process. It is a hard market. I'm not going to sugarcoat that or lie about it. It is, but it can be done, and we can do it together. And I look forward to working with you.